A All right. Let's ooh. Mm, uh. Me? <laughs> My stomach decided to just go ooh. Well, that's not good. It is when it's fine when there's coke involved. Oh, well, okay. I'm a terrible person. I did not think of Coca-Cola at first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. God damn it. Hi, a little note from Yasmin from the future here. So, as this video kind of entails, with it being Autism Awareness, well, Autism Acceptance Month and also Autism Awareness Day was on the 2nd of April. I'm literally trying to remember dates from the top of my head. Um, it is a pretty um, serious episode. So, I just thought I'd put a little disclosure here that it's going to go into quite a lot of details about experiences, some involving like some trauma and some stories. Um, so please be aware of that. And also it is always important to start a conversation, especially when autism is in the picture. So we wanted to just have an episode to tell our stories because that's what we have experienced. And we have, we are all, we have, um, it's hard. sorry this is hard <laughs> um we all have um in a way experience with autism uh, me being on the autistic spectrum myself wade and as you'll hear coda coming from parental perspective so we wanted to reach out to as many perspectives as possible and we wanted it to come from us directly especially as we have the experiences and we wanted to be able to share those experiences because at the end of the day we're all human beings and we all have different stories to tell so please be aware when going into this episode it's going to cover a lot of heavy topics but it's a conversation that needs to be opened up and we're proud to open it up so on to the episode and love you all it, excuse me no go 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 get your butt out of that get your butt out <laughs> That what? Just... I must present my gloriousness to the world. Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> and Coda is covered in cats. In one eye might be. <laughs> As you should. Anyway. Hey -o! Hey -o! Hello. This is Blue Minds Think Alike. Yeah. And we got Wade. I'm here. We got Coda. Hello. And we also have myself. And the cats. And the and the cats. Yes. And today we're gonna kinda go in the serious route just because Yeah. I looked up a bunch <laughs> of things online and it is according to the UK. Um, April is World Autism Acceptance Month. Yeah. And on the day we're filming this, it is um, Autism Awareness Day. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> it's New World Autism New Awareness New Day today. <laughs> and it's got a whole I month. I did some Googling. It came up. Fair enough. <laughs> I, 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 I'll take your word for it. So we thought we would talk about our experiences as someone with autism. Yes. And as someone, um, wait, is it ADHD? Um, uh, ADHD. So, as I understand it, it's full blown ADHD and a mildish case of Asperger's. Okay. Or Asperger's, however it's properly pronounced. I don't know. You probably say it differently to me because we say Asperger's. No, no offense, but that just sounds wrong. I'm sorry. So, I, I, I just like Ash Burns. Welcome to being English, as in British English. Oh, I know. I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I learned just how like we are the even American languages back in 21 when I like had live. In an American accent, say water. Water. That just, see, like, 
in the saying that saying it that way in a British accent just sounds weird. And then Coda will be talking from. Uh, I am talking from a parental leave. My son has Asperger's and ADHD as well. <clears throat> so we've got quite a few perspectives going on here. Yes. Which is interesting. Okay. So what I'm going to do... You? What about you, Yasmin? Um, no, that way. <laughs> you were right the first time. See, I'm pointing to my... On my, on my thing... I'm pointing to the... This episode is already falling apart. <laughs> um, I am on the autism spectrum. When I was a kid, I was diagnosed with a language disorder. Okay. I don't know where I'm at now. I'm just on the spectrum, mate. Fair. Because <laughs> I'm not getting off of it anytime soon. Yeah, I hear that's a train you don't get off of. Okay, what I'm yeah. going to do first, though, which I think would be very good, is read a definition of what autism is. Okay. So, basically, autism spectrum disorder, ASD, is a neurological and developmental disorder that affects how people interact with others, communicate, learn, and behave. Although autism can be diagnosed at any age... It is described as a developmental disorder because symptoms generally generally appear in the first two years of life. <laughs> that is from the National Institute of Mental Health website. And all I remember from a young age is I think my mum knew. I think my mum knew. I was on the spectrum. But I got tested very early age and she actually sent me all of my records of basically when I got tested, all the like thingy, so I could read through them and actually see um throughout a lot of life. I I was a I was a shitty little kid. <laughs> I didn't like people. I tried to bite them when they came close. <laughs> oh, geez. I didn't like people at Perfect. all. So trying to interact, get me to interact with other children at like two, three, four years old, I would just bite them. I mean, what else are you going to do? Talk to them? <laughs> In my brain, it didn't make sense to talk to them. <laughs> exactly. See, now, Kitten, he was the exact opposite. He oh, yeah. has always been a very affectionate. He loves to give hugs and is very affectionate. And he was actually born three months pre me. Oh, so, um, yeah. One I was pound two weeks pre me. Oh, yeah. And so we thought a lot of his delays. We didn't know it was autism until he was. It was about eight when he got diagnosed. Hmm thought all that time it was because of his being born premature that he was just delayed developmentally yeah then we found out it was autism then things started clicking mm -hmm. and... wade did you have any childhood experiences with it or was it later on diagnosed with yes. um i don't can't remember, I can't remember the exact time or like time period that I was diagnosed. It, I definitely was young because I've definitely been seeing like I I remember I saw this one particular Doctor Who for confidentiality purposes I shall not name. Um, I do I do remember his name. Yeah, that's um, okay. Yeah, and yeah, and like and for reasons I won't get into. Um. Uh. Nothing like bad. Just various reasons. My mom wanted just pers those... personal personal barrier. Yep. Sure. Let's go with that. I. It, it was. It was a while ago when I stopped seeing this. The first guy. He diagnosed me with ADHD. And then I went and saw another doctor. Um. And this guy was amazing at what he did. 
that's the, the, this new doctor I was seeing. He diagnosed him. He was like, yeah, he has ADHD. Um, he also has like a mildish case of Asper of Aspergers. Mm. Um, and so, and he was he was really really good at his job. He was really good at diagnosing. Really good at like treatment. Um, he had a son that was around my age who had like ADHD and Aspergers. Um. And, but yeah, and then I, funny enough, technically that second guy was technically a, like a child neurologist, uh, pediatric neurologist, that's the word I think, I don't know, um, but yeah, I ended up seeing him until I was like 21 or 22, <laughs> still, because, hey, if they know what they're doing and they're good with you, I say keep with them if you can. Well, Technically, once I turned 18, he was supposed to stop seeing me, but he was just like, hey, why not? <laughs> I'll see you. Again. I'll keep seeing you because why not? Mm -hmm. That was cool of him. But yeah, like for me, my, my diagnosis definitely was when I was very young. Young enough where I don't exactly remember like the exact diagnosis and when it happened. Yeah. Yeah. I know from a parental view, boy, it's a challenge. Because I didn't hear my son say, I love you, till he was about four. He didn't even start talking until he, other than mom and dad, till he was after uh, about three and a half. Oh, I have a question, if I may. Mm -hmm. Go Thomas. ahead. We've already gone to these topics. How much do you think, like, because you said that he had a lot of, like, diff of developmental difficulties, you know? Oh, How? Yeah. Right, hold on, sorry. I'll wait for Yasmin. No, no, no. Carry on going. I'll still be okay. able to you because I'm still okay. in the room. For him, it really was a mix. Like, okay. They taught him. He had to start early in intervention school just before he turned three years old. Mm -hmm. And they actually had to teach him to talk with sign language. Interesting. Like, drink. <clears throat> and thank you. And then they slowly, as he learned the words, they moved, took away the sign language. And that's how they taught him to speak. Nice. Um, walking. A lot of it was a combination because he didn't always get along with everybody. Like, going to the stores, even, it was probably nine, ten years old mm -hmm. before we could take him to stores without meltdowns. Well, if I if I may come add on to this and comment. Yes. So, I, I've met, like, again, I won't name him. I'll let you be the one to name him first in this episode. I won't say his name until you do. Um, but, because, uh, like, having met him and, pre and because living with him myself, I kind of instantly clocked the, okay, yeah, he definitely has Asperger's. Um, and I also remember, um, those are like, I was thinking, there, when I went to um, uh, university, there was this one when I actually physically like went in person there. There was this one kid that was in my calculus class who also had Aspergers, like full blown Aspergers, and he rem and like I do, rem and I remember a lot. I haven't spoken with him since then, but I see a lot of similarities between your son and this kid. Mm -hmm. And so, I I mean it should. I feel like me personally, I can sometimes be good at hiding it, but I can get very overwhelmed very easily. And that's, and knowing that I have kind of a really mild case of Asperger's and both your son and this other kid had like a proper case of it and seeing what they're like, it's, I, I, I definitely understand like how difficult it could be because knowing how difficult it can be just for myself. And I don't even have the worst of it. 
and see he's on the higher end, high functioning. Yeah. Thankfully, I mean. Thankfully, I can, yes. Because he he he's had those struggles, but for him, it's that he's always been very friendly. He's always been very. Well, like I said, you've seen how he is. He's very outgoing, very friendly. Mm -hmm. Kids didn't understand, though, why he would have the meltdowns. Yeah. I, he would end up going on a walk to the office and what they found for him to do, and he loved it. Mm -hmm. Either the recycle bin of papers, he could sit there and rip them up, or he could take the boxes, uh, reams of paper, and he could move them around the office and stuff. Like physical, just move. And now we're talking a third, fourth grader, so a small kid with a... <laughs> Is but yours... Oh, go ahead. No, sorry. I was going to say, because... And I'm going I'm to kind of explain a thing here, but it'll get to a point, I promise. I remember several years ago, at some point through like grade school, I can't remember exactly when, we did a assignment where we learned there are kind of like three main types of learners. Each person kind of falls primarily into one of these three categories. Visual learners who learn by seeing stuff, by reading things. Auditory learners who learn by hearing it and taking it in that way. And then I believe it was called kinesthetic learners who learn by doing. For me... What I do a lot is because, like, let's say I'm trying to think of a DD and d character idea or something. I will just pace around my apartment. And because I am actively in motion, it gets the creative juices and the engine of my brain flowing. I am going to guess that your son is like that. He, he learns by doing. Yes. He's the same kid. I could see him playing a video game, having music going, having YouTube, and watching a stream, and be able to keep track of everything. He's that. That's how. That's the ADHD, I think. Just the having to have multiple things because to have one thing going. Yeah. He can't, he cannot just do just one. Yeah, for one thing, like when we sit down and watch our show weekly, it's a struggle for him to sit. He has to, on the commercial breaks, he has to be on his phone doing something else. His brain always has to be stimulated doing something. Mm-hmm. Like, you can, like, it's like, you can't just stay still. Well, like, you can physically be still, but your brain has to be thinking about something. I think it calms that boy down as coffee. Weirdly, I actually understand why that is. <laughs> it's because, like, I know there are, it, it's a very rare percentage of the population, but like where caffeine actually has a reverse effect where it helps calm them down. Um, it, yeah, a, th a lot of, I know quite a few people with ADHD and that's what it is, is coffee has that a reverse effect on them. Yeah. Um, I don't know, because I've historically not been a fan of coffee, but my taste buds have definitely been changing the past few years. <laughs> I wonder. And there's all sorts of creamers. He doesn't even add sugar to his. He just uses creamer to flavor it and sweeten it. I remember, to slightly get off topic, but still on topic of coffee, I told you the story of the time I had a black coffee on a plane. Oh, dear. Um, I think it was the first time I flew to England. I, it was on, on the flight to England. Um, they were coming, like, they bring the drink cart, and they said they had, like, Starbucks coffee. And I'm like, you know what? I'll try it. Why not? I'll try a bit. <laughs> Me having no idea how proper sweetening or sugaring of coffee works, I'm like, I'll just take it black. Oh, oh boy, it, 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 that was a mistake. It was like, I, I don't know how to describe it. It was not a pleasant experience, but I also didn't want to be rude and just dump 
like when they came out with the garbage bag, dumpling effect was effectively a full cup of coffee in there. Well, it wasn't full. It was like the airplane size. So it was like half. Yeah. Like, the cup was half the size of a normal cup. <laughs> um, and so over the course of about 30 minutes, I was like, sip. <laughs> Wait 30 to 60 seconds for my um, uh, taste buds to heal. <laughs> sip. <laughs> <laughs> I finished it now. Nice. I I have a question for you guys. I have an answer, possibly. Now I'm actually here and I found what I was looking for. Well, I I've seen it as he's grown up and what has it been like for you guys as young adults? <laughs> uh, you, you, um, uh, you want me to be honest? Shit. <laughs> it will be rough. It will be very rough. That's... I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. It will be rough. Um, because he has both ADHD and Asperger's. Mm-hmm. So here's the thing for me. With I feel like the ADHD side of it. Actually, you know what? Hold on. I'll pause. I'll let Yasmin speak first. <laughs> Yes, Ben, you may go ahead first, so I don't take up three hours. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for me personally, in adult life, because obviously I've got the notes from when I was a kid, um, I would kind of say it's been rougher on me because I've had to handle it from being told the word autism because I didn't get told officially like autism was what I was until I was 21 oh wow because here's the thing i was aware i had I, i was aware i had a language disorder i never had autism associated with it okay so i was just like okay so this has to explain things right and in adult life, there are going to be people who agree with you and there are going to be people who would disagree with you. There are moments that are going to, like, I still am getting over quite a lot of things. Um, I was at one point, and Wade can attest to this, a person who basically, I always go straight to self-defense. I always went straight to self-defense in some modes. When... Uh, so I was just like, wait, I didn't do that. Why Why did I, I? I may not have intended to do so, but I didn't feel like I did it. I would try and defend why I haven't done it. And then later on just go, shit. That's how it came across though, didn't it? So being aware of how I interact as a person is one thing I've had to kind of get a hold of, which I have. I'm proud to say. But I think the worst thing for me is freaking anxiety especially being i love my job i love my workplace it is so hard to be around people though sometimes just because personally there are some people that are going to be really lovely to you and want to have a conversation with you and i'll have a lovely kind of bystander conversation with them there are some people who are going to look at me like i'm fucking stupid i can see that Kitten, uh, he's been working at the UPS store. Going on uh, Thanksgiving, it'll be about two years. Nice. And he works in the back. He does the packing and the uh, stacking and the organizing the orders. He doesn't deal with the public. They've had him try to come out, you know, work on a slow day. It's too much. He gets too overwhelmed so they're like that's cool you can stay in the back they let him come in on when it's closed to even work on one day to work on extra stuff I uh, yeah I, I can totally see that. what you mean I do get overwhelmed I think Christmas Eve oh god Um. right Christmas Eve last year it was me and my colleague working and it was a sunday so it was an easy 
like Sunday trading hours. And I got so overwhelmed because there was a lot of people talking to me at once and then everybody, I got so overwhelmed I just started crying. So she told me to go in the back. She said she had it handled. She sorted out a bunch of stuff. But what the one thing that absolutely tugged at my heartstrings and they didn't even know I was autistic or anything. There was this one customer who'd asked me to do some things for her and hopefully get them done during the day. And I did. And she basically looked at me. She saw she saw that the tears were coming in. I think she told my colleague that I was crying. Oh. And she went out, said, I'll be coming back in in a few minutes. Came back with two hot chocolates. And I oh. I went and cried even more. Because <laughs> I just... The first one was literally crying of anxiety and overload. The second cry was absolute fucking happy tears. I... Ugh. <laughs> That's so awesome when that she yeah. saw, hey, you're she, having a rough time she felt you. She felt guilty. And I was just like, no, you don't need to feel guilty. And it's just like, I'm just so grateful that you've done this for me. And I'm just like, it's absolutely fine. Yeah. And I just... And she, like my colleague just went, you go in the back, go drink it, have a bit of time. I'll continue out here. Like, I am grateful that, like, even though I'm not, I'm not in a company where I'm two person on the all the time. Sometimes I'm just me for a whole day. I am lucky that, she, like, my colleague just knows my boundaries to kind of um, put me in a state where she's just like. I've got your back, don't worry. I'm going to go and do this. You're going to go back there. And she highly talks about me to upper management and like says, you literally taught me everything. And I was, I was just like, I am, an, I am a manager 25 fucking years old. And I'm making an it's impact and it's like, how the fuck am I doing it? Um, <laughs> you're doing the best thing. You're being you. Exactly. That's what it's all about in the end. That's the way I explained to Kitten when he was little. Because he heard it started being talked about. And I'm like, okay, this is what it is. Most kids Getting along with other people, that's really easy. That's something most kids can do. They have to work really hard at school stuff, though. For you, school stuff is, like, super easy. You just, your brain, you just have to work extra hard on the people stuff. And that was the simplest way I could think to explain it to them. And... Yeah, um... I think it's hard to differentiate sometimes between different types of the spectrum as well because, like like you said, your child might have more social um, aspects than educational because it's with it being developmental. And me, because I have dyslexia literally tied to its back, oh. I was fucked in the education system. And what annoyed me, so I went to high school. I did all my exams. I was supposed to receive extra time at first uh, during my first set of exams um, in year 10. I was... This is before they changed the whole school system, by the way. Um, this was st still when they were GCSEs and they were purely graded on A, B, C, D, E kind mm. of spectrum. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing my exams. I was put in a separate room from the exam hall. So I wasn't put exactly in the exam hall. I was put in a separate room. And I was... Um, what was the other thing? Um, I was uh, basically allowed extra time. I'd qualified for extra time. Mm -hmm. So everyone knew I had this language disorder... The dyslexia hadn't even come in until I was 17. Oh, wow. 
so I was allowed this extra time. And then all of a sudden, when I get to my final year in high school, I am stuck in the exam hall. I don't even use my extra time, even though I'm allocated it. They just give me a piece of paper saying, this is when you can finish if you want to use your extra time. I didn't end up doing that because I just finished it just because I just wanted to get out of there. Because even with the use of extra time, first of all, you should have kept me in the separate rooms. 100% so that the allocated times made sense so that anyone else who had extra time was in that room. Don't put me in a fucking exam hall where when everybody else leaves and I'm still there, all I can know is that, oh, everybody's finished, everybody's <laughs> leaving. That's the impression I get. And it's not good. It's not okay. I managed to get through my exams and managed to get some good grades because I had to work my freaking ass off. But at the same time, if you'd have put me in that separate room, I would have probably used that extra time and maybe scored a little bit higher. <gasps> I can say from my viewpoint, fighting with the schools to oh. get your child the things they need. My son was suspended in kindergarten. I'm sorry, what? He They let him go off in the field at recess, and he was spinning in a circle with a stick, and it hit another, another kid walked into it. That's he accidental got, contact. That's not... Oh. Got, um, it was supposed... The teacher couldn't handle him to the point... He was missing at least one day of school a week. It was supposed to be all day kindergarten. He went for two to three hours. Because she couldn't handle him. Um, he was put in a room. They ha would have class events. He he was out of control. So he got put in the, in the back room by himself. While everyone else got to have the party. Valentine. Christmas. Halloween. To the point I was getting called by the superintendent. Because he was missing so much school. And they were going to put me in jail for it. Because when he was having a meltdown day, I would just call him into school because it was either that or they would call as soon as he got to school. You need to pick him up. He's out of control. That's fucked. I, it was a hellacious fight. Thankfully, we moved. And in first grade, they started noticing he got in with a group called Easter Seal, an organization. Mm. And then when we moved, which I we still live in the place, in second grade, that's when the school was finally, you know, he's a great kid, but there's something wrong. There's something off. We want to do a full testing of him. And when they found that out, I have had a lot less fights in some areas, but like high school. By the end of his, high schools have become fucking. No. By the end of his tenth grade year, he had failed so much we didn't think he was going to graduate. His junior year, they actually um at the end of his sophomore year, tenth grade year for last year and this year, he went in. Excuse me, Jake. Excuse me, cat. <laughs> Rude old man. But they actually got him into an alternative school. Okay. He has been on a roll all of last year, all of this year. His GPA went from like a 1.1 to a, a 1.2 to like a 3.5, 3.7. Okay, now... And at the end of May, he will graduate high school. Nice. As a matter of fact, in two weeks, he turns 18. Yeah. Yay. But the fighting with the schools. 
I will say. Not fun. Do not recommend. <laughs> no, I probably part of what led to my health issue at 30. So one thing. Sorry. Oh, go ahead. One thing I'm going to bring up, because something came up on my TikTok feed. Well, quite a lot. And this is probably a pattern for anybody that's seen things online, but schools are just becoming less tolerable in general, if from my point of view, just because there have been a lot of stories of parents literally getting angry at schools for really basic things, not even to do with like full on autism or anything. Like some things like um I think it was uh just like not letting people go to the bathroom or like things that students can't help but do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those stories came up and there's a lot of angry parents. And I think I, I, it's hard for most kids to go to school now, mainly because they spend so much time there. Cause in the UK you're in, you're in, primary school until from about three four three or four till you're 11 and then you go to high school from 11 to 16 and then it's sixth form or um you can just go straight into apprenticeships and work 16 to 18 okay that's kind of our education system but it's the thing of just like, why do we have to spend so much time in school? But the thing is, I can fully tell you that I have no life experience on how taxes work. I have no life experience on how buying a house would work, how um, sorting out mortgages would work, how just general life I have no idea about. Yet maths and English are the most important things. I have wanted for years, and since I was in school even, I have wanted to have have a, basically a home ec class that teaches all this. You know, also, let's be real. We just had food teach, tech where we were taught how to cook. <laughs> you know, teach, have it encompass everything. Basic cooking, you know, basic house care. You know, how to manage your bills, how to fill out your taxes. Yep. Have a year-long class that is a requirement to graduate. Like the 11, 12, like your second to last, your last year. Make it a requirement. Mm. Because too many kids don't know. Because there's a lot of people afterwards that just go on to having lives and getting married and having kids when they get to like 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, like when it comes to me, I'm very much in a whirlwind of what the fuck do I do now? I'm just like, now what? What what, what have I got? What, just working and just like trying to achieve things. I mean, I went to university. I was able to get a degree. I wasn't able to get a master's. <laughs> we know how that turned out. Um, well, Wade knows how that turned out. <laughs> the glare. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was angry. Oh. You know what I'm referring to, right? Oh, I know exactly what you're referring <laughs> to. I remember... Yeah. I, I remember stuff. Oh yeah, I will. I will talk a little bit about it. <laughs> it but yeah, the schools definitely—it's a fight. There are some really good ones out there. Yeah, and parent. A piece of advice for any parent of a child on the spec. Well, children, John, but on the spectrum. Stand your ground and fight for your kids' rights. Don't let the schools push you around. 
make sure your kid gets what they need. Like every year, I've had to fight because it's in his IEP that he gets picked up in front of the house. Yet every year they have him marked off some way off location. And I have to get on the phone five o'clock in the morning and argue with them. This is on his IEP. Why is he not being picked up at the house like he always is? Like you have to stand your ground as a parent. I, oh, I complete. I, I feel like I, Growing up was very lucky where like because I I went to um I I well I, okay I I won't say the name of it at least not in this episode but like I I, I went I, this, to a school I yeah. went to a school I yeah. went to school learn place yes but um like the school I was very accommodating like the people there generally seemed to like want to help. But my mom also was very, like, much, like, the type of person who, like, you stood your ground and fought for my rights and such. I lost track of the amount of, like, meetings with the, like, school faculty and stuff that, like, I, that even I was in. Um, I remember the, like, I, Especially when in my like younger years, um, I remember it, it got to, it got to the point where when I was in right. So the way that my district works was like first through like kindergarten through fourth is elementary, and then fifth and sixth is what they call intermediate. Huh? Um, in between, so at the time. Um, up until I fit, up until sometime in between fifth and sixth grade for me, um, everything from sixth grade and down, um, started at like eight thirty, eight forty five in the morning or something, and everything from seventh up started at about like seven thirty. And they were debating on whether or not we should set the rest of the district to the earlier time frame, and. By this point, I had already been, like, through my mom and stuff, attended so many, like, district meetings about, like, okay, how do we do help with Wade and, like, Wade's plan, like, whenever there were issues coming up, that even though I'm pretty sure I legally was not allowed to be there, I was at this meeting anyway, where they were discussing, hey, are we going to do this time change or not? I was because my, my mom was on the PTO, and so I was just sitting there listening to confidential information. But like the the whole reason I kind of bring that up is because, like you you're right, there are some schools that can be very accommodating, um, with kids that have, um like autism spectrum disorders or some other neurological disorders. Um, and I felt like I was lucky enough to have one of those. But even still, you still have to fight because maybe, okay, yes, we can help you. Um, uh, but this is the extent of what we're able to do. Okay, that's fine. But I also need this thing for my child or that doesn't really work. Can we try this instead? You have to be... Uh, unmoving in what you need. Mm hmm I mean, there was a time he was having such a bad meltdown and just a, such a bad day at school. We got called in. No surprise. By this stage, third grade, I'm used to it, you know. Yeah. He had three options. Either straighten up and do good, which by this point was not happening. There wasn't even lunchtime. Hmm. Two, you come home early and you have double the homework because he was just being rude. He was just being outright mean to people. Teachers, everybody. I said, or three, I stay at school with you for the rest of the day. 
So I actually had to stay in school with him because he just, and the teachers, they were great teachers. They were amazing. Wait, he he actually chose the third option? No, he wanted to just fly right, and I told him that wasn't an option. He he thought because he had proven he was not going to at that stage. Oh no! During recess, he's in. He's bringing his classmates. This is my. This is my mom. This is. He's introducing me to his friends and stuff. But the teachers were almost too soft. They were too accommodating, and that's where the balance. Yes, you got to work with the kid, but you also have to have those boundaries for them that they know. Routine. This is a routine boundary. Mm -hmm. you, can't, this, you can't cross this. You have to be willing to help, but they also need to be willing to help themselves. Yep. And it, I could say from my view, from where he was, like, there, we couldn't, you know them all ways. You know how big that place is. And how um, overwhelming yes. that place can be. Especially on like a sun a Saturday or Sunday. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It used to be he'd have a death grip on my hand trying to go through there. Mm hmm But yet last summer, was he not off with Lou and everybody else? He was actually going out. And I was I was there one of those days when yeah. I, 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 do, I don't want to say details here. <laughs> but it takes but yeah. it's taken him a lot of work. And yeah. I've tried to just give that encouragement, but also give that, you know what, kid? You can't use this disability as an excuse. Yes, it's what you have. It's not who you are. You are capable of so much. Don't look, just because you have a disability, it do not let it stop you, kid. If I if I may say a thing, or I guess yeah. suggest a thing, is he seeing a therapist? He has been for about ten years. Good. Keep keep doing it. Keep doing it. Oh yeah, he's. We've already transitioned him from like the minor uh -huh. to a place where it's adult. Is it going to be with the same person? Yep. Well, it's okay. a different person, but he's the transition actually happened last year. Oh, so he's already t been talking with this new person? Yep. Okay. And they have a great connection. Okay, good. He's, he's at the stage now. He's learned how to make his own appointments. He schedules yeah. his own therapy appointments. What day, what time. Mm -hmm. He just did his first med review by himself. So he he's starting to, but. Yeah. One thing, if I may add on to that as well. Mm -hmm. what, what, and this is a thing that I don't know if this is what he already does, but an idea that might help. Um, one, th I, one thing that helps me is like, Whenever, like if I go to the dentist or go see my doctor or go see the, my therapist or whatever, do not leave that meeting without setting a date and time for another appointment. Even if you have no idea whether or not you'll be able to make it, have something set. Because yeah. you will either A, be able to make it, and because you have a set thing there, you will go to it. Or you'll find you are not able to make it. And you will reschedule. You have to, re if you have to change it, you must reschedule for something. Do not ever cancel. You reschedule for something else that you can make. And then you'll go. Because yeah. I, I know from experience, um, there's a period of like for five years where I would like have that appointment and I'd be like, well, I don't know what my schedule is going to be in six months, so I won't set anything. Three years pass. <laughs> have something set. Four years for the glasses. Feel ya. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what is 
because he does his therapy in his room. Nice. So he oh, does is it virtual. online? Yep, he does virtual. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And when he comes out of his room, the first thing he tells me is the date and time of his next appointment. That's good. That's good. Before they, he's getting in those routines. Honestly, I see a lot of him and you, Wade. I agree, yeah. He's, if, yeah, I'll say, if I, if I may continue with the advice giving if that's okay absolutely um kind of going back to something we were saying earlier about like you are wondering as like younger or as like still young adults but kind of a bit more older and experienced than your your child is yeah um i i say it I, i i won't sugar do you want me to sugarcoat it or no it's me. Do I ever ask you to sugarcoat anything? Fair. <laughs> um, I uh, he is sl- go vi- pretty much sl- right now. It it might not be very evident yet, but especially once he graduates, we'll be entering a very rough and tricky f- period of several years. Well, I believe that. because for me. I, I I have always functioned best when I have some sort of guide or task or something set out in front of me. Grade school was pretty much just, okay, you do this, do this, yeah, 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 do that. Okay, sweet. You're 18 years old now. Awesome. Now you pick what you do. I'm sorry, what now? And so there will be, it will be a struggle for um him to figure out okay this is what i want to do this is how i do it there are going to be lots of times where okay what college you want to go to i have no idea i have no idea gets overwhelmed because all this sudden new information is suddenly being thrust upon him that he never had to deal with before and I guess the best advice I can give is be patient. There are certain things uh, um, uh, that you are going to want to like help him with and be like, why can't you like do it like this or something? There are certain things that he will have to work through in his own way um, and on his own time which may take very many years, very many years more so than my, than some others might. Um, and you just have to make sure that, be like I said before, be willing to help, but make sure he's willing to help himself also. And just make sure that he knows that like, hey, whatever you need, I will help with. I will support you. If one thing my dad has said, I don't he like I meant for you. So I don't care if you do underwater basket weaving, as long as you know you'll be able to support yourself and your family, and you're willing to apply and commit to it. I'm all in for you. You know that's pretty much what I've told him. I've told him, yeah. I don't care what it is, as long as you're happy. Mm-hmm. You're not hurting nobody else. It's nothing illegal. Yeah. You got your back 100%. Mm-hmm. Because seeing the challenges he's gone through as a parent, mm-hmm. it's heart-wrenching. Oh, yeah. To see the struggles, to see the kid bully him because he's having a meltdown because it's too loud. To see kids make fun of them because he can't sit still. Um, and all I can do is give him a hug and he's hit. So he's that thick skin. Yeah. 
you had to learn that. I'm sure you guys understand that. Oh, yeah. That thick skin. And, you know, I hate that it had to happen. Because it shouldn't. That's why. And you guys know the story, but I'll say it for the stream or for the episode. Fifth grade. His teacher went grade by grade and did autism awareness presentations. He mm-hmm. not only helped his teacher create the presentation, he went to the classes. And when it talked about the sound, he and the what it was like, the lights, the sound, mm-hmm. how it's so much more intense, he would walk out. Even his own peers in fifth grade, he would, he came back in, he was doing Q&A with them to tell them, you know what, because somebody asked him, why did you walk out? Why did you have to leave the classroom? And he's like, this is why. Because what it sounded like to you was so much more to me. And just, but. Since he did that, the next day, he was coming back to me. Hey, so-and-so was being nice to me today. So-and-so wasn't being bullying me. Because kids started to understand. Exactly. And you two, Mm -hmm. I feel the same way. I couldn't be... The way you two are, I couldn't be prouder to know you two. Yeah. Thank you. It, it's hard as hell from my perspective to see. Mm-hmm. But to see the growth and to yeah. see the changes and to see those little accomplishments. Mm-hmm. If he can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah. If you two, you hold down jobs, you have your own places, the things you have gone to college, both of you. Mm -hmm. I went to college and I made it harder for myself than it needed to be. But you did it. Yeah. Because like, and and that's the thing, because like, one of the things that like, that in the past couple weeks with my therapist, he's mentioned that has helped a lot is because like I was I took a 29 month bachelor's degree. Every class was only four weeks long. Oh dang. it was really freaking fast. And you and, yeah. and it was also like a very hands-on high-end class. So uh, by the end of my program, I was making like straight up actual pretty, pretty much actual commercials. Over the span of four weeks. Um, and like, my therapist was like, yeah, turn back time five years. Would you have been able to do that? P- probably not. Look at you now. Look at the progress you have made in just a few years. Imagine what the next five years will be like. And the biggest thing, you guys didn't give Exactly. You may have wanted to. I don't totally agree with the I didn't give up. But you're still here. You're, you're still, still here. And if, if I may comment, Yasmin? Respectfully, I disagree with your disagreements. You did not give up. I, I, I am not even joking. When I fully do, like I genuinely am, would not be surprised if, like, in your future, like, if money was no object, if timing was no object, would you right now, and like, if you had the ability to do it, would you right now go and finish your masters if you could, if there were no objections? No. May I ask why? Because it's the same freaking thing every single time. 
And if I've been put through it once, I'm not going to put myself through it again. Uh, that's fair. Because it was... Because <sighs> the thing with you guys is you guys talk about how you guys kind of were lucky. Mm -hmm. Even with when dealing with the bullying. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. One yeah. of the memories that ended up coming up was um, I always hated being in history because I was they found a way to pick on me. I was technically physically assaulted when someone hit me in the head with their history book because they were told to move. Um, I was mostly called a bitch. I was made fun of just because I didn't know what the word virgin meant. And when people were calling me a virgin, I was laughed at just because I said no, because no one was kind <sighs> enough to explain it to me, apart from these other kids who were in my class who was basically very nice and basically just saying, honestly, honey, you are, this is what we're trying to explain. I was mainly made fun of. And obviously, this is without me hearing autism. This is mostly me just getting told, shut up, bitch, or that I'm not worth anyone's time. Um, I was mostly, like, history class I hated just because, like, I have been physically hit. I have had a football purposely kicked into my gut. Um, and they admitted it, like, at the end of the day. Um, do, do do I need to do I need to start killing people for you? <laughs> no, because I know two I know two people I can call. I don't right know where now. they are right now. So, and I'm hoping they grew up since then, because some of them were on this. I think some of them were on the spectrum as well, but Fair. how they were coming off was really not good. Fair. Wait, let me know if that changes, because I know I know two people right now I can call, and I also know a third person who can. Probably find where they live. Mm -hmm. He found yeah, where I, I was, live. I was bullied quite badly. But one thing that I hated was that they were turning it on me and saying I was the bully. Just because I was standing up for myself. And I was saying, why do you think you can say that? Do you mind stopping? Blah, 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 blah. I was saying a lot of things to try and defend myself, and then I was apparently the bully. I'm only trying to defend myself because it's hard for me to say a fucking thing anymore because, like, I'm just going to get torn down most of the time. And even in uni, um, I made it through my degree, but the reason I wouldn't go back to a master's is because I don't think anybody... I don't think anybody cared. Like, the, when it came to the tutoring, it was during COVID. Oh. So yeah. it was 2020 to 2021. And... <sighs> I sometimes, because COVID was coming around a lot, so I was just like, I'm not comfortable walking into the uni physically. I will attend digitally. I was trying my best at what I was doing and Wade can attest to this because there were some nights where I was trying to get, because um, it was some reports I was doing and Wade actually helped me try and write a couple. Yes, I did. He was in video chats with me and Lou trying to write this um, mm -hmm. report together for certain modules and I was going through them and trying to explain what it was and also got the thingy up. I failed the semester and even when I tried to call like for extra help and stuff because technically I paid for that in the sense of the government paid for that because I have a bursary a disability bursary so I'm entitled to it and um they just kept on saying the same things. But 
obviously, if I get it explained to me one way, I think, yeah, I've got it, and go absolutely U-turn. And do a different way instead that doesn't make it make sense. And what was worse is, and Wade knows this, in a meeting that I had, which was basically depending on whether I would withdraw or reset the year, I obviously chose withdraw because I wasn't going through it again. Apparently, I was supposed to do it, the whole thing independently and not always ask for help. Okay. When I'm on a bursary that actually gets me a skills tutor who was always with me and thank God for her because she was so happy to see me every time and always wanted to help in the best way possible and would sit with me and literally work her freaking ass off. And in a meeting be told, like, you do call us quite a lot. I don't think once a week is quite a lot. Once a week? Uh, no. Or once every two weeks. weeks. I hardly had that many calls with them. And it was... <sighs> it was the fact that... Um... I was told in that meeting that I should have been doing it independently. I was just like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. Because mm -hmm. the only... Okay. Because that there were different faculty members there, including the disability member. The disability member was the only person who stood up for me. Because they were the only one who gave a shit. Okay, so yeah, that okay, that that changes the situation because like that's not that's because like, it sounds like you were like because like you said you were entitled like hey I have a disability I am legally entitled to these. I got the study uh, sessions no. not with not with the tutors themselves, but with a study tutor. Okay. But I'm always entitled to extra help. And you weren't getting it. What the fuck? I was well, then, uh, at around that, in circles. And like when I had a personal meeting with the disability advisor, mm -hmm. she'd mentioned that basically she felt sorry that the whole meeting went down the way it did. Mm -hmm. And that a lot of them had to happen because during COVID, a lot of students dropped out because they didn't feel like their tutors were giving a shit. And I'm not going to mention the uni by name because I don't want to get fucking sued. But like, <laughs> that was it. And I, that was like the final straw for me. I'm just like, no, I'm not being in education anymore. I have my, yeah. I have my fucking degree. That's all I fucking need. I don't need anything else. And high school support wasn't the easiest either. I mean, I I had extra tuition for stuff, but the bullying I just couldn't handle. Hopefully everyone kind of grew up after that and realized, yeah, it's a bit shit. Um, Because college was a little bit better. I was just, in some cases, easily stressed. And I think the tutors picked up on that. And I officially got tested for dyslexia because they were realizing a lot of my writing wasn't making sense. And I can't, couldn't really read very well. Because uh... reading and comprehension is why... I can't really read because I have to read the same thing over and over again. It's why I do audiobooks because it's easier for me to listen to it than it is for me to read it on a page. Can I can't comprehend what I've read. <laughs> people are people are cruel to things they don't understand. But the best part about autism and Asperger's you get to be unique. You get to be one of a kind. We you get, get to see things in a whole different view. That in some ways, I would love to be able to see myself and understand and feel the way you guys do. 
because under, to understand because every person I've met with Asper you two get me, many other people in my have all had the biggest hearts I've ever met. Some of the best people I've met, ever met are on the spectrum. And I just hope more people can break down the prejudices, break down the preconceptions, and see that people on the spectrum are just people. Take away the disability. They're still just people. You guys, I mean, the same emotions, the love, the anger, the, you see the same, you feel the same, you, I mean, cut all three of us open right now, we're all going to believe the same color. Wait, your blood doesn't glow? Then what the, then what the hell is my arm doing right now? Mine doesn't glow, it just uh, coagulates. Mine, glow- Mine blood glows in the dark. <laughs> Imagine how terrifying that would be if you just walked into a dark room and your blood started glowing. <laughs> hey, I made yes and smile. I have succeeded. See? Yeah. But that that's my biggest thing. Just People, I just want people to take away everything because, like I said, you guys, the people I've known, my own son, just because you guys see the world, your brains see the world a little differently, mm-hmm. those are some of the best people I know. So when it comes to autism and the spectrum, don't just be willing to learn. I mean, every person, it is a known fact that every person is unique. Every person has a different personality. Everyone processes things differently, sees things in a different light. That's literally all it is. I just see things in a different light. Thing. Even between people who are all on the spectrum, I see things differently than you, Koda, than you, Yasmin. Just like you guys, different than I do. Yeah. Yes. That, I love it because mm-hmm. it brings such a new view to things. Mm-hmm. I admit mm-hmm. there are times where it can be challenging because like the ticks, there are certain mm-hmm. ones like the repetitiveness where you have to repeat a certain phrase mm-hmm. or watch the same bit of a show over and over. And I admit there are times where yeah, those can be a struggle even for me, and I know what they are. Well, it's like for me with the ADHD side of it, like, okay, like like I'll give an example that's happened with me, and I'm sure it's probably happened with you. Hey, son, I need you to go empty the trash or something. Like, say you do that. Walks out the door. Oh, hey, there's an um, uh, eagle flying across. Why am I outside? Walks back in. You know, had similar situation. What was I doing in here? You were looking for this, this, and this. Walks into the storage room. Okay. Oh, wait. I've got to put this here and put that there. Wait, why the, did the, that come back here again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, there was a time. Um. Uh, yesterday, actually. I think it was. Yeah, it was yesterday where I was like watching TV, doing something. Um. And like I had to go to the bathroom, but and like oh no, so I was watching TV and I was like trying to look up something, but like at the same time I had to go to the bathroom, and so I'm like okay, I went to the bathroom, and I set my phone down, and I'm like, what was I supposed to look up? And I just kind of stood there for about thirty minutes. I'm like, what was I trying to think of? I have that because on a day to day basis. Help. There's there's maybe ten feet to the bathroom from where I'm sitting right now. I, I will say one, I'll just sum up my whole theory in one thing. 
Mm -hmm. for anyone watching this. Take a minute and ask. Ask to understand. Ask, okay, I saw you were doing this. I don't understand. What's going on? Because if you take just a few minutes to understand, things are going to be a lot more sense, for one. Mm -hmm. And two, nine times out of ten, you're going to get a chance to know somebody who's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. I, I am really cool, I, I will admit. <laughs> <laughs> the jury's out. <laughs> but no, that that's probably my biggest thing. Yeah. Someone who doesn't again, I'm coming from a parent. Mm -hmm. Take the time and get and try to understand and try to just don't just make assumptions. Because that kid you see having a temper tantrum in the store, it could be because it's too loud and they can't handle it. Yeah. I can't mm -hmm. handle noise at all. Um, I can't be in a crowd. Like, there's... I didn't do the parades at Disneyland because I know what I'm like with fireworks and I know what I'm like with like crowded environments sometimes. Probably when I next time go to Disneyland, see if I can get a disability thingy for autism because I think that, they acknowledge that. That would be awesome. Yeah, and maybe get myself some ear defenders because I know what I'm like around fireworks and loud noises kind of scenarios. Um, just because, like, when I was a kid, I hated big bangs of fireworks. I still hate them now. Every time I hear bonfire night or New Year's Eve and I hear the fireworks go off, I'm just, I'm just near the quietest part I can, just inside can't hear them will not hear them don't want to hear them i used to like be really sensitive like that too to kind of like loud sudden noises i feel like the only reason i've kind of for for lack of a, of a better term I'm, i cannot stress that that enough lack of a better term gotten over it learn to cope yeah okay yeah there we go that's another one yeah. learn, learn to cope with it i'll say sorry learn to cope with it is because my pretty much my entire dad's side of the family is like bit is like a hunting family. And so I've been around guns a lot and like I've gone hunting with my dad several times, you know. And so I've I've gotten used to it, I should say. Well, time could do that. That's why I and I want your guys' opinion on this. Go on. Because this is something Kitten is doing. Mm -hmm. So in our little town, the barber shop. They always, for Halloween, they always turn into like this super haunted little interior. He's always been terrified to go in. He's never gone. He started playing horror games recently. He's trying to help himself get over it because at Halloween, he wants to go through it for the first time. So he's playing horror games now to start getting himself used to it. What horror games, if I may ask? I don't remember. I know he's played some Resident Evils. Uh, I forget what else. But... He's going straight into Resident Evil? Oh, boy. He's try he wants to be able to overcome this fear. Yeah. And he, start he started this back in November, December. Nice. So, it can happen. You can, it can be mm -hmm. learned to overcome and handle things. Yeah. I mean, anxiety, I still can't handle, but then again, not many yeah. people can. And like all that stuff. I mean, anxiety of being in a, like in my workplace alone, there are some moments where I just feel like I need to call somebody. And I'm luckily so lucky to have a great management network that just says, give me mm -hmm. a call and I will give you that positive kick up the ass you need. Mm -hmm. I put it as kick up the ass. They probably didn't. <laughs> like, I basically said, so if I need a positive kick up the ass, I know who to call. And they just said, sure, go with that. Because <laughs> it just makes me feel better knowing that there's someone who supports me. And like, 
it's just like some people know how to deal with autism some people don't i actually um got asked questions by some people because they were talking there, there was conversations with some customers with autism about autism and then they asked me did you like there was one that was asking what age did you start speaking because like they like their child hadn't started speaking yet and they were a certain age and like was quite mute and it's just like it doesn't happen straight away I probably I don't don't specifically remember I just remember being very talkative at four years old uh, <laughs> I didn't remember being very talkative when I was a child um but told them not to worry that there's probably a way it can come around you can always talk to someone and just being able to talk about it and like them asking questions and it was really nice kind of in a way and um I think it's just nice to acknowledge it sometimes because like I rarely play the autism card unless someone really makes me pull it out mm -hmm. and I can sometimes come off in a different way in a conversation when I don't mean to or I just go did I literally just change my tone and if they say yeah and I'm just like oh my god I'm so sorry and they were just like oh no 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 it's fine. like there's a way to get around it afterwards yeah and you stand when you say it but there's some people who just literally will not acknowledge it and <laughs> it's not okay but at the same time it's gonna happen there are gonna be people who don't acknowledge mental health or um autism spectrum disorders it's one of those things unfortunately yeah those are the people we need to throw off the edge of the flat earth we must start our holy crusade you know what have i done but yeah i'm i'm, I'm happy now Am I fully aware of what I want and stuff? Probably not. Am I fully is, aware of what career is anyone... I have? Probably not. Am I fully aware that I am a, an autistic person who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing? Absolutely. Um, no one knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> no one know. ever, no one knows what they're doing. So you're the, not you're not alone. The there. world runs a certain way and it all has to be about money and stability and all that shite but the nice part got one hell of a backup crew behind you now yeah hugs <laughs> big hugs I mean I'm, I'm going to talk about this and I hope Wade's comfortable with this Wales Comic Con, me and Wade had an autism clash. Ah, uh, oh, um, it's mainly because we didn't communicate or communicate very. I, I, I only remember, I only remember one, one bit of it. Actually, no, I remember the part that happened with Lou. I remember the part, the part that happened with you. I didn't realize it happened until after we got home that day. Yeah, because basically there, there was a little kind of like mini thing of just like there was a little passive aggressive between us and I just went into messages and just went, uh, what's up, dude? I don't know what I've done. Can you tell me? <laughs> and apparently you didn't like me mentioning something and I didn't know until I don't, you said it. What was the thing? I don't remember what the thing was. It was about t crossing the road. Oh! Okay, no, I remember. Okay, now I was that the second year or the first year we went. Second. Oh, I fully remember this. Um. Okay, no. So you finish because I have something to add that might completely change the story. Oh God! So basically, what I got was basically um, that you didn't like it being mentioned, and I didn't know until you'd actually said that, and I was just like. Uh, I need to be told if there's an issue, otherwise I'm not gonna know when to stop. And I don't mean to bring it all up. Oh, but okay, it, no, wait, no. It, it, ju it just properly hit me. That one, okay, yeah. No, no, I remember. Like, no, may I add on? Add you in my may part add now? on to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I remember it, 
I can't remember what the exact thing was, but um, um. Th there was something where, like, I think because I was, so it, it came about because whenever we we were going to get food. Yeah, we were going to get food, but and we were walking there because to save on like Uber cost, we were we're fine yeah. walking. We have nothing to do for a few hours. We'll walk to a place and we'll walk back to our hotel and eat it. Um. Oh no no no! So, we didn't go back to the hotel and eat it. We ate in the restaurant. Fair enough. Well, either way, we it were was walking a group for of us. It was like me, you, and Lou were staying together. Yeah. It was mainly me, you, and Lou. Two other people came with. No, I remember. I remember. I, I, and I know exactly who the other two people were. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if we should name them here no. or fair enough. One of them's been on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> One of them's been on the podcast before. The other has not. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, no, no. And I had my, cause I, for some reason, I was the only one who had signal, who either had signal or had phone battery. I was the only one who had both of those somehow. And so, and so I was like, okay, I get to, I'm the GPS. And the GPS was being really weird. Um, was A, both being really, really weird. And B, we both had maps and I was guiding and I just went yeah. this way. <laughs> I was yeah. way out in front. And then, yeah. And being, and me being completely, un completely, unaware of the various like differences in like traffic laws and signage between the US and the UK. Um uh, I think at some point I just tried to like blatantly cross um uh this was in York, yeah. <laughs> oh this was in York. Yeah you ran across a road when there was a car coming. I did do that once. <laughs> yeah that's what that's what it was. I, I accidentally there was no car when I looked before and then it just blazed out of nowhere. Once that one specific time happened, other things happened, but anyway, and so it kind of became. I remember it became like it, it, it started like, like the thing started. I remember, um, uh, when it was the fight, um, when we were in Wales still, and we were, um, walking to get pizza. I specifically remember we were walking to Pizza Hut, yes, it, it was Saturday night. We were walking to Pizza, I specifically remember the night. Mm. And, and so that's kind of what we were doing. And it became a joke that um, uh, I am oblivious to all things traffic and road related. It became, um, it became a joke that you were okay with at the start. But then it just went downhill. Yeah. My, my, and I it, didn't my, know it went downhill until well, I well, had no, to no, ask you. When, when I say it went downhill, I meant like, yeah, I was when, when, we, when I first arrived in England this year, I was decent with it. But then... Clearly, I am unkept at being able to navigate because I apparently navigate us to... I think I navigated us to... It was... I think it was a pet shelter. I tried... <laughs> yeah, you I was did. trying... Like, the ad... I tried in Pizza Hut. It's... It, it, I confirmed... And then I found the path Hut. and just went, guys, it's this way. Like, it navigated us to, like, a pet shelter <laughs> that looked like it was shut down because it was in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, but and basically, then, I... We we got there, yeah. And I remember, like the re the rest of that night and the ne and the next day of the con. Things felt no that night. Things felt tense, and then I messaged you on Discord. I was no, I so here's the thing. No, it may felt tense to you m from my side because like it kind of became a running joke. You know, it's fine. Like I felt fine with it. I was having a laugh. Like, yeah, I, I know. I'm terrible at direction. No, it's like not at Pizza Hut. You went. You rolled your eyes at me, dude. I mean, our friendship is based upon us. <laughs> I know. This is the thing. My my friend. Our friendship I felt is based nervous upon... because you rolled your eyes like ugh, and I was like, I... uh. Okay, shit. well, okay. I, I'll say this. It may not have been the next day. I don't know when it was. It was the same night. Started. It was that night. But fair enough. That was a very long night, though, to be fair. So I may have, I may be getting confused. But either way, at first, I, I was fine to, with it. Uh, it... God damn it, yeah. <laughs> and so, I know anyway, exactly when it was. Fair enough. Either way. So, like, for a little bit, it was fun because, like, we were just having a fun joke, you know, because, like, banter between good friends, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the reason that I started getting annoyed was because it kept getting brought up so often. And it kept and on just becoming like, repetitive. And I'm just like, 
And I'm like, okay, it, it's like the fun has kind of worn off. We don't need to say it anymore. I yeah. remember I remember that part. You I think basically that... we sat at the table. I messaged you asking, Are you okay? I'm so sorry. And then you told me you were getting hated yeah. by the jokes. And yeah. You were just reminding me, I'm just exhausted. I'm not mad. I'm just irritated. It, and I said it, it you, had been a long day. I basically already. kind of laid down the boundary in message, but then again in person, because Luke yeah. was then there just going, What the fuck did I miss? Um <laughs> Yeah. Because Lou didn't know this happened until we told him. I basically said, you've got to tell me to stop something. Otherwise, it's probably going to accidentally come up again. Yes. If you can't, if you don't communicate that to me, I just think, oh, okay, it'll probably get brought up in conversation again at some point and they'll be fine with it. If I get told no, that is fine. I'm not going to blow up at you and say, why not? Why kill my phone? Why be a buzzkill? But at the same time, it's just like, if you don't fucking like it, like I don't like the joke, there is a joke I don't like being compared to a milkshake called a Yazoo, and my name is Yasmin. I got made fun of that in high school, and I will never, ever I acknowledge a Yazoo or drink a Yazoo because of it. It is. It sounds really stupid, but because of the association... But basically, we had to kind of learn, oh shit, we're shit communicators. We all are. And kind I've, of learn from that learning curve. I've had a similar incident with Kitten. He thought it was a joke. And it kept coming up. And coming up. And he just... Short jokes. Because, for context, Kitten is over six foot tall. I am five yes. foot two. So I've been getting short jokes all my life to begin with. But he it, it didn't click with him that it was hurting my feelings. Like he didn't see it that way. He just thought it was a joke. I'm like, no. Listen. And I had it took a real heart to heart to get him to understand, you know. Mm. There's a difference between a joke and hurting someone's feelings. Yeah. There's, there's a time and a place for certain types of jokes, like a certain environment. Um, well, you have to uh, not constantly be throwing out the same type of joke, otherwise mm -hmm. it no longer becomes a joke. It just becomes no longer, like, whatever humor associated with it is gone. And, like, okay, now I'm just getting annoyed by it. Yeah. There are certain things we become annoyed by, but if we don't communicate it, it probably won't yeah. stop, which is an unfortunate thing, which we kind of learned. But we still clashed over because autism, like, it's just like, wait, what am I doing that's wrong? And also, you're irritating me by doing this thing that I've not told you to stop doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's kind of a 50-50 clash. Yeah. We had a clash like that just a couple of weeks ago. Between his autism and my own mental health, I was in a very bad day. Very bad day. He came home having a shitty day from school. His added. I try to say hi, and he's just giving me attitude because, of course, that day at school, comes I was up, already comes out. Yep, and I was already off kilter to begin with. So he's coming home with that attitude. I told, I'll paraphrase because I'll try to avoid the language. Get the hell in your room and don't bother coming out till dinner if you'd want to act like that okay we had, so you kind of had to had, put your foot down yeah we had quite the clash because he just wasn't letting his stuff go and he wasn't seeing where i was coming from i was trying to but yeah that's another thing i find with just autistic autistic anybody on the autistic spectrum in general it's hard to let things go and people just go let it go yes yeah, it's as simple as that it's not easy for me to let go of as people kind of perceived because it's just like let it go hon you won't be forget and it's just like uh it'll come up in my membrane because it's now ingrained in it it's not mm -hmm. just there it's ingrained and i'm pretty sure i have moments where i remember random moments and just go oh god that scarred me or oh god why did i do yeah. that or there's a lot of things. There's a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of learning mm -hmm. curves, rights and wrongs, all the above. Yeah. 
because I think yeah. one thing that is definitely difficult and that people don't people kind of don't see is sometimes when an autistic person is learning what is right and what is wrong. And oh God, like some things can just go, wait, I'm not allowed to do this. Wait, why am I not allowed to do this? How is it bad? A lot of it is question, questions, 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 like in your brain, just like, why is it a bad thing? How How is this a bad thing? Why am I being told it's a bad thing? Why am I being yelled at? Oh, God. So it's trying to differentiate. Am I doing a good thing? Am I doing a bad thing? What? Mm -hmm. And that's where the other communication and patience. I'm pretty sure we've all done some stupid shit and some wrong shit and right shit. Which which book in the series of that in my life do you want? Volume one, two, three, or seven? We don't talk about four, five, and six. <laughs> yeah. Those, those ones were burnt. They were too dangerous. Yeah, those, those are X-rated. They reveal too much. <laughs> right. I, I don't mean to, like, I know we're kind of on a roll here, but I would like to just slightly note we're almost at two hours. Oh, oh shit! God. Yeah, we're almost, <laughs> two, we're almost at two hours. We should probably wrap it up here. Okay, I think yeah. we've done enough for now. If there's a part two, there might end up being a part two, because who fucking knows? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think we've done a good kind of sum up here of, like, our experiences, yeah. like, they're not all good, they're not all bad either, but at the same time, an experience is an experience, but if there's a lesson, please be patient with us. There are still times where I am telling people, you have said a lot of words to me, can we just dial it back a bit? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably not in the best way of saying it, and I'm just going to go, let me just bring it back. Yeah. <laughs> let me just uh, yep. rewind. One, one last thing I would like to add as well, because I have experienced this myself. Um, uh, so like I, I've met several people in like, for example, my dad, some I'm a, one of my current I'm a bosses at Home Depot. I won't drop names or anything, but that are like ha that have ADHD or autism and have gotten to the point where they've like properly like learned to cope with it and manage it, you know? Even in and another thing I'd like to add that I don't think was said before, even if you're a person who is on the spectrum or something. Eventually, there will come a point where you learn to manage it because we have to learn to manage it, otherwise we can't live. It will look different for every person. You also have to be sure that you, and this is going to sound weird, you kind of don't forget what it was like when you didn't have it managed. Because, like, lots of people have been like, okay, I understand where you're coming from. It's like this and this and this. Yes, you're correct. I'm not there yet you are i'm not yeah 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 i just want to make sure that bit got in here <laughs> keep an open mind. oh sorry my last thing just keep an open mind and open communication with them even that next to pry out of their hands come on <laughs> yep because that Talk next to me. <laughs> person you may that next person you may ask on the spectrum a question about they may become your best friend and you because you just opened up a conversation and asked them a question you were wondering mm -hmm. yeah so compassion yep anyway thank you guys so much for watching please um talk about like open up a conversation about autism and spread some more awareness about it because it's it's important just because everyone experiences it differently some more mental some more physical it it's totally dependent on everybody's experience most of ours are probably mental mm -hmm. in this specific room yes. but um there is so much to it <laughs> so please do feel the free to research it because mm -hmm. there's so much information out there about different types of autism and also like how you can tell people are autistic and usually symptoms as well. If you feel like you're autistic as well, feel free to go to your local GP and say, can I be tested? 
because they will most likely get you tested, get you sorted out, and then hopefully come back with a result for you, even if you're a little bit curious or you feel like, I kind of do these things as well. Are they a bit repetitive and stuff? I might be on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So always feel free and safe to communicate that you might be autistic or get yourself tested first. Anyway, <laughs> it's been a bit of a roller coaster today. Um, yeah. God. Close to tears. Uh, <laughs> if you Much. see more Blue Minds content, we have trading favorites coming soon. We have um, Blue Mind Reviews, which is coming with a big one from me because I will be going through my 2023 recap um, of having my Cineworld Unlimited card because I got <laughs> to see more movies and save so much fucking money. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to see us gaming, playing our gaming series, which have taken a pause at the moment, but we'll probably pick them up at some point. And of course, if you want to see any other content on this channel, please do subscribe. Mm -hmm. We do talk nerdy shit, but we also have our serious moments. So. Sorry, you, I just had an idea, but I'll, talk, I'll say it after yeah, we yeah, yeah. That's the fine. recording. <laughs> That's fine. But anyway, take care, everybody. Be safe. And because this is an important episode, spread the awareness. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye now.